Welcome to Bring the World Home, a production of the Returned Peace Corps Volunteers of Hawaii. My name is Linda Chalk. I served as a Peace Corps volunteer in the Northern Mariana Islands from 1966 to 1968. I will be your host for today's program. In this program, we will be sharing with you one Peace Corps volunteer's experiences from abroad. Hopefully, our messages of friendship and family with people of all countries and cultures is exhibited in each of our shows. With us today is Summer Austin, who served as a Peace Corps volunteer in Jamaica from 1999 to 2001. Welcome, Summer. Thank you. I have a map of the world here, and I'd like you to show us where your country was. Okay. Uh, here we are on the island of Hawaii. And I served on the island of Jamaica, which is in the Caribbean Sea, in the Greater Antilles, right south of Cuba. I see. Um, how did you get to be assigned to Jamaica? Well, I went through the Peace Corps application process. Um, it, it took between six and 12 months. It's kind of a long process. And when it came time, after I knew I was accepted in the Peace Corps, and I knew about the time that I was going to go. I was called by my Peace Corps recruiter, and they said, well, this assignment has come up. It's about three months earlier than you're expecting to leave, but it's doing environmental education in Jamaica. Are you interested? And I said, absolutely. I'm ready to go. So that's, how, that's when I found out I was going to Jamaica about a month before I left. That's pretty exciting. Um, did they look at your background and training before they assigned you to this particular site? They did. I, I believe that's, that's how they assign people in dif into the different sectors within each country is based on your experience and background education. And so my undergraduate degree is at the University of Florida in natural resource conservation and horror. And I had a little bit of environmental education experience also. So they uh, assigned me to the environment education sector in Jamaica. I see. And uh, then I worked with schools and teachers there. Where and, and how long was the training that the Peace Corps provided for you? Um, well, first we met um, in Miami as a group, all the volunteers going to Jamaica. And we were there for three days to get a brief introduction about Peace Corps in general mm -hmm. and where we'll be headed to in uh, Kingston. And then we flew from Miami to Kingston and we spent about a week at the uh, college there, University of West Indies, and we stayed in the dorms, and we had lectures and guest speakers uh, come in. We had the national um, drummers, which is really great wow. uh, experience, come in and perform. And so we had that brief introduction for that week to get um, introduced to the food and um, basics of the country, lifestyle, and things like that. And then after that first week, we were separated into our sectors and went into our host communities and into our, um, our host houses. And so I stayed with a lady, Miss Clovis, and she was a teacher in a, in a town called Sligoville in the parish of St. Anne. And I stayed there for one month, and we had training every pretty much every day <clears throat> by Peace Corps staff and people in the community and, and around the country would come and talk about local environmental issues and um, different government agencies that we might be able to use as resources in our work in our mm -hmm. particular area. I see. Can you tell us a little bit about the primary assignment that you did in Jamaica? So after the first month of training, uh, we separated even further and went into our specific area of assignment and I worked at a local NGO um, which is non-government organization called PEPA and it was in the parish of Portland and that acronym stands for Portland Environment Protection Association mm -hmm. and it's on the northeast coast of Jamaica it's the most mountainous part of the island so there's a lot of high rainfall and really lush environment and I work climate. very tropical yeah, yeah. and uh, lots of rivers and waterfalls. Mm -hmm. 
And so I, I worked in the NGO there as the environmental education officer. And my job was to facilitate the teachers in from primary and secondary schools to help them um, implement an environmental education program into their existing curriculum. I see. Okay. Um, you spoke of the culture of Jamaica as being very engaging. When you'd walk down the street, uh, people would greet you and, and engage you in conversation. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that was uh, it's 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 such a that was just one of the most beautiful things that I I remember most about Jamaica. It's it's a very open, honest, proud culture, and people are very they you know it, you're acknowledged and they acknowledge each other as you walk down the street mm -hmm. with different um, acknowledgments. Um, if you if you're passing um, an older person you would say yes dads you know or <laughs> something like that like you give an acknowledgement mm -hmm. and um, it's a very respectful culture and it, that's that's definitely a key word if I was going to have one word to describe about um, Jamaica's culture it would be respect okay Jamaican culture is world not, uh, renowned for its food and its music and I guess you had a lot of that and enjoyed the food there yeah, it, like like we were saying, it's a very lush uh, climate there. So as you can imagine, there's just plenty of fruits and vegetables, um, lots of mangoes, different varieties of mango, um, avocado they call pear, um, breadfruit, um, mm -hmm. roasted breadfruit is a really favorite dish, and their national dish is aki and saltfish. Mm -hmm. And did, did they have coconuts there too? Coconuts, yeah, oh. and that's. Coconut is usually part of almost every meal. They um, will make uh, coconut rice by make, squeezing out the grated coconut to get the coconut milk mm -hmm. and then adding that to rice and they make rice and peas with uh, fresh thyme and other spices. It's, wow. it's very, very good cuisine. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, some of the cultural things that um, you experienced there, can you tell us a little bit about some of the artifacts that you brought back with you? Sure. Um, Jamaica is a very creative culture and people, and um, they just use the resources around them to create so many great things. And I just have uh, just a couple examples. This um, is a fruit, actually, that comes off of a tree. It's calabash, or paki is another name for it. And it's a gourd that grows on a tree. And they, uh, this one, they cut in half, and then they carve it while it's still green. It's different um, intricate designs. And this one that somebody made for me, it has, it's a design of a fish. I notice here they put your name on it uh -huh. also. Yeah, they put my name on it for me. And um, a, most, a lot of people will eat out of this. Uh, oh. So this is a, it's a bowl or, mm -hmm. um, or you know, a cup to drink out of. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really common. And um, also from the, from the same tree, they, they have made little um, shakers. And um, also really commonly made is jewelry used from, uh, you know, things they find in their environment. This is a seed from a grass. Um, common name is Job's Tears and different seeds and things. So they like to make that. And they also will... Um, do a lot of knitting. They knitted this hat that I'm wearing, and and um, this outfit was also made for me while I was there. Very nice. Thank uh, you. Is there a name for the type of material or the pattern? Uh, no, not that I know of. Okay. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the travels that you did um, through the island as part of your primary job? I traveled all over uh, my parish to visit uh, the schools. We worked at about 30 schools um, from, you know, the, the primary, it's an in English system of schools, so primary is like first through sixth grade and secondary would be, um, you know, high school. So I, I traveled all over the parish and, you know, high up into the mountains, the schools there in the remote areas, um, and, you know, all the way to the east and the western ends. And it was just a really great opportunity for me because um, 
a lot of times volunteers will be in one remote area and I was actually I had um, access to the the vehicle at the NGO that I worked with so I was able to travel to these remote areas and visit a lot of different places within the island mm -hmm. um, throughout the week. Nice so opportunity. Well besides the primary work that you did, did you have any other activities that you engaged in? Yeah, um, Peace Corps actually encourages uh, volunteers to, if they, if they would like, to do a secondary project. So my primary focus was environmental education um, officer mm -hmm. with this NGO. And then my secondary project, I was able to facilitate the collaboration between the NGO that I worked with in Jamaica and another NGO in Florida based at the um, based at the University of Florida, which is where I graduated from. Mm -hmm. And so between that collaboration of the two NGOs, we were able to get funding for a secondary project, working with the Maroons in the parish that I lived in and talking to them about the medicinal plants that they use um, in the area and, and type of preparations that they make. Um, and so I wanted to fit it in with what I was doing with the schools mm -hmm. and the children. So we're able to put it together into a format that's, uh, that's for the, the school kids. So they're able to have something, you know, in writing that's a lot of the common plants um, being used, but, you know, it's, it's in a, um, it's a format easily, you know, read and taught by teachers in the schools there. I see. So you have um, materials now for their curriculum. Uh, exactly. It's, it's a, um, it's an addition to their curriculum, something that mm -hmm. they can use. There's, um, you know, they can use it um, in botany lessons and they and then in their science um, lessons or, you know, and they can also, um, the kids can go home and, you know, do a little interview maybe with, uh, you know, their great uncle and talk about the plants that, you know, he collects. And um, so it, it's just, it was just a good way to, um, to bring this information um, into the school system mm -hmm. and you know keep this this cultural knowledge within mm -hmm. the within the parish there now that you're back here in Hawaii you're also in education and it sounds like the background and the experience you gained from the Peace Corps ex uh, experience is um, very useful in your current it's extremely position. extremely useful I think Peace Corps gives people an opportunity to do things that um, they, not, they might not be able to do otherwise. It's a really great um, way to just get hands-on experience, field experience, and you'll be able to do things um, that are just, um, just amazing, you know, and, and you might not have an opportunity to do otherwise. So I got an incredible amount of experience and exposure to things that I'm, I've been using ever since, and um, I hope to continue to do here. You mentioned that um, going to Jamaica, instead of going as a tourist, um, but rather as a Peace Corps volunteer, was uh, a much more enriching um, experience for you. Absolutely. I think that, um, you know, the country is, you know, it invited these volunteers to come, and so I was invited to come there, and I went there with a specific thing to do and a place to live, and living in a culture and you know the day-to-day -day lifestyle it's it's something that's you know unmatched by visiting and and you you get so much more out of it than um at, than you do as a as a tourist do you think that um the investment by the u.s government in a program such as peace corps was worthwhile for the country that you were assigned to absolutely um peace corps has been in jamaica since its establishment, and um, it's just uh, you know the the feedback is extremely positive, and they you know continue to invite Peace Corps volunteers there, and the work that's been done is um, just long lasting. You know, continues to to go on, and um, just the ability of of people to ha to have this time. Like I, you know, I was a volunteer there, and I was able to work there so I was we were able to get funding to create a position that's oh, to 
Okay. So I, I'm gone now, but a Jamaica now is working in my position at the NGO. Too so good. that's continuing. Right. So um, the whole idea is that these, you know, volunteers will go into a place and create mm -hmm. something that will continue when the volunteer is gone. And uh, these things, these are just, you know, they might seem simple, but they're things that wouldn't happen otherwise. People don't have the time, you know, to do these mm -hmm. things. So it's it, it's an incredible investment. It's definitely worthwhile. Okay, um, you mentioned that. Um, um, let's see, you also um, were a part of or heard a lot of the Jamaican music, um, which is uh, reggae. Rasta, reggae. Yeah, the, the, the culture uh, is very uh, tied in with the music, mm -hmm. and you know, Jamaican. It's, it's, it's Jamaica is such a small country, yet it's world known for its music, its food, and you know other aspects of its culture. And the reggae and now dance hall music is really intertwined with the Rastafarian culture and and lifestyle. And um, it's a good way, you know, if people are interested in, in learning more about um, Rastafarian philosophies. Uh, reggae music and dance hall music um, might be a good introduction. Okay. So overall, did you feel that um, this was a really good experience for you? Absolutely. It's um, it was an incredible experience. It's um, you know changed my life and made me who I am today. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I would definitely go back, and I've made some lifelong friends. I consider it a home. You're still in communication with them? Still in communication um, through, you know, mail. Um, now e there's email now, so mm -hmm. um, technology has made things a lot easier. But, yeah, I, I feel that I will have these friends for the rest of my life. Okay. Is there anything that you'd like to touch on? Um, topics? Um, I just, I, I guess I, I would say that, um, you know, if anyone's, Thinking about joining the Peace Corps, I definitely recommend it. I think it's a it's an incredible opportunity to experience another culture in a in a in a whole different way than you um, than you can just just through uh, you know traveling on your own. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's an incredible experience, and um, my experience in Jamaica is just you know I, I learned so much about the people, and it's a it's a beautiful place, you know, beautiful people, and um, I encourage people to find out more about Jamaica and travel there and, you know, see the true Jamaica because it's so different than um, a lot of people experience, you know, if they don't leave their hotel room. It's not the, the true as Jamaica. A, as a tourist. Right. Yeah. So, um, which, is, which is probably true of most countries. If you know a local contact or have a relative or friend there, you get to see a lot more of the country and going there as a Peace Corps volunteer you're not only there seeing the country, but you also have a function there, you know, and you're able to help out. Absolutely. So. It's, it's true all over the world, and um, just seeing it personally there, um, I think people ha will have a much richer experience wh wherever they go if they try to connect with the people living there mm -hmm. and, um, you know, do some of the things that are, that are done on a daily basis and see what life's all about in mm -hmm. that country. You said something about not having a lot of expectations when you go somewhere. And With Peace Corps, I think that's important. Um, you know, when I saw people leaving early, leaving their, uh, leaving the country early, a lot of times it had to do with the fact that they had certain expectations and they were very rigid and thinking, you know, Peace Corps is supposed to be like this. and then they get there and it's a day-to-day -day, the things that they're doing and they realize you know this is just the way it's going to be day-to-day -day. it's totally different than what they had expected mm -hmm. so um, they can't really overcome that so they you know decided to leave and my suggestion would be you know if you're thinking about doing something like the Peace Corps it, you should just go with the, you know try to be as open-minded as possible mm -hmm. and just you know, see what it's like once you get there and don't, you know, try to have too many 
specific expectations about what you're going to be doing or what it's going to be like because things change you know so much and you should just be open to, right. to what's, what's okay. happening. Okay. Yeah. Was there anything else you wanted to say? Kind of. <laughs> um, I would just say that um, I I just want the I just want to say again how um, just a beautiful country Jamaica is. Um, where I was living um, was right next to the Blue and John Crow Mountain Range, and so there's a pretty dramatic um, fluctuation in, in elevations, you know, from you know sea level and like I was saying, or up to the um, Blue Mountain Peak, which is 7,000 feet. So you get a lot of difference in um, vegetation types, mm -hmm. and uh, so there's a lot of variety. And um, the way Jamaica was formed, it was formed volcanically and also through tectonic action. And that's you know there's a lot of endemism, a lot of endemic plants there, and high high diversity. So there's just um, just a lot to see and explore, and you know great hikes. Um, and the people, um, you know, are up in the mountains. You get to, you know, talk with people and find out, um, you know, they, people use different plants for medicine or crafts and things like that. And um, the culture is really connected to the environment and um, what's around them. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot to, lot to uh, explore there. And, you know, I wouldn't have had that experience or that opportunity without uh, Peace Corps. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank you, Summer, for sharing your experiences uh, with us today. And um, I'd like to um, thank everyone for viewing this. Please join us next time when we visit another country and bring the world home. Thank you.